Hi folks, great to see you. Thanks for coming back to watch another video on the channel. And um, today's video is going to be, um, well, it's going to be about exposure blends and HDR. And believe it or not, this is by popular demand from Lightroom users. Yes, it is. Because everybody knows that one of the big driving main reasons that I use uh, raw therapy and more so at the minute dark table is the fact that the demosaicing algorithms are nowhere near as flawed as the one over in uh, Lightroom, uh, which you can see over at the top here. Uh, these pictures were shot back in 2008, I think. I read bloody hell, I really do need to get out more. <laughs> but. Um, as you can see, we've got them open in both Lightroom and over here in Darktable, and ostensibly uh, they look pretty identical, except these thumbnails are subject to Lightroom's background crappy contrast adjustments that are hidden and buried, another problem with Lightroom. And uh, what I'm going to do is demonstrate why I personally think that the creation of HDR and 32-bit floating point images, which is what you do when you do a, which is what you get when you do a photo merge in Lightroom, is actually superior in, over in Darktable for working up in Lightroom. So those of you who are not really into Lightroom. Um, or any, any Adobe products might not actually appreciate this video, but um, I will do another video. It won't be next week because I'll be sort of running around like Adelis chicken, uh, getting ready to go to uh, do this workshop in Iceland. But it, I, I will do a full blown dark table 32 bit HDR workflow uh, in another video later on so you'll have to keep reminding me about that because i just forget because my memory's like a sieve but to get back to um lightroom and uh, the way lightroom users usually work uh, with uh, an exposure bracketed sequence like this from shadow detail through to eye detail is uh, quite simple now to get rid of uh, Lightroom's crappy background adjustments I'm going to take these over into the develop module and we are just going to hit process version swap and I need to tell you now that if you want to click the link in the description below uh, you can go and download uh, these very raw files and if you're a Lightroom user, you can also download this Treatcliffe Punchy XMP, which I'm going to deploy uh, a little bit later on in Lightroom. So uh, anyway, uh, ignore that, or uh, let's just skip past that. And so we've basically processed version swapped these images now, which gets rid of Lightroom's crappy background adjustments. And the usual thing to do is to go to Photo, uh, Photo Merge HDR. And so we'll get the HDR dialog box come up. And yeah, it's, it's okay. You'll notice I've not got auto settings checked because if we check auto settings, it just comes out disgusting and full of contrast and it, it's just terrible. But anyway, what I'm going to do is click cancel on there just for a minute because either this or this uh, gives you some idea of what the 32-bit uh, floating point DNG in this case over in Lightroom is going to look like. But anyway, I'm just going to click cancel on that and I'm going to come back to uh, Darktable. And for... Processing this image in Darktable, first off, I'm just going to select one of the images and we are going to come over to uh, White Balance and we're going to change it from Camera, uh, that's if yours is on Camera, over to Camera Reference or Righty. 
and then we're going to come over to the color tab and we're going to come to cali color calibration and we're just going to get the little picker here and that will sample the entire image to me it looks a little bit cool so all i'm going to do is draw a narrower box down here and you can see that actually warms the image up slightly the next thing i'm going to do is to come over to the base tab and sometimes you'll see a red square it say white balance applied twice it isn't because if you just click it a couple of times uh, that warning triangle goes away and all i'm going to do is add filmic at default that's all i'm going to do now i've done that i'm going to come back to the color calibration i mean you can do this before it doesn't really matter but it's better if you've got the tonal distribution under control with the filmic module before you do this well i find it is anyway and all we're going to do is move the hue slider from where it is over to into the blue and this is sort of counterintuitive but you'll notice the image is warmed up a little bit more we're not going to do anything else as i said this isn't really going to be all about create uh, processing a 32-bit floating point hdr image inside of dark table it, this is more for the uh, lightroom users so they can actually get the benefit of the merge process inside a dark table so that is pretty much as far as we're going to go for processing inside a dark table we're going to come to over to the back to the light table and you don't really have to do this but if you've got more pictures in your folder uh, than what i've got here this is just a way of visually demarcating everything so you know what's what so i'm going to come to history stack and i'm going to go to copy and uh, just make sure we've copied it and then i'm going to click on the darkest one and i'm going to click paste and then i'm going to select the other three uh, rather like that and we're going to click paste again and uh, there we go right so all the images are uh, basically processed in the same fundamental way we're now going to select the first one shift click onto the last one and uh, there we go we've got them all selected now we're going to come to selected images and this is where the magic happens we're going to go create hdr and there is our hdr and you'll notice how quick it was and the ghosting controls and things that you have in lightroom are all a bit janky if you ask me and um, I've tried this on multiple images where I've got moving water, etc. And this very simple HDR creation over in uh, Darktable just seems to do a really superb job on everything I've tried it on. And you don't get any ghosting, you don't get any artifacting, nothing. And of course, you because we're using Darktable and Darktable's demosaic and algorithm, uh, which we've set to RCD plus VNG4, which is very, very similar to um, the process over in uh, Raw Therapy. The images on um, this um, HDR image are not being subjected to Lightroom's deeply flawed uh, demosaic and algorithm, uh, which will show up all sorts of pre-sharpening halos on these high contrast borders so now we've got the um, dng created what we need to do is we need to export it okay first thing and so what we want is a tiff yeah because we can't export as a dng we need a tiff and instead of having it in 16 bit we're going to change that to 32 bit float and that ladies and gentlemen is it we're just going to click export and i hope this works and puts it in the right place there it is superb now thanks to 
that Lewis script that Todd Pryor pointed me to a few weeks back and which I did the last video on for the channel. All I'm going to do is come over to my external editors and I'm going to go for number one, okay, and I'm going to export it to Lightroom. But because Lightroom is already open, I actually need to go and quit it for this process to work. Otherwise, if it's, if it's already open, Darktable is just going to sit in a, uh, in a stalled loop, if you like, waiting for you to quit it so it can open it again. So we're just going to click Edit. And um, uh, we've chosen the program. And is it going to do it? Um, come on. <laughs> God. And we are just going to choose Edit and launching Lightroom uh, there we go I obviously didn't click my button hard enough and so here is um, the imported 32-bit floating point TIFF and if we just go and click on that there that doesn't look too bad at all and if you'll notice the histogram nothing is clipped all right and if I come into the develop module, you can tell it's a 32-bit float image because I can go with the exposure slider from minus 10 to plus 10. Alrighty. So, all we need to do now is to... Where are we? Where's folders gone? Alright, so I can come back to the Trick Cliff folder. And uh, there are all the other raw files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to five star rate and um, put a red pick a red colored flag on the dark table uh, merge and uh, then we're going to just that's only so we can uh, identify it in comparisons i'm going to select these uh, five raw files again and i think what we'll do is because uh, we've already processed version swapped them i'm going to warm them up a little bit just to try and make them look a little bit similar to uh, what we did over in Darktable. And uh, then we're going to go to Photo. And we're going to go to Photo Merge uh, HDR. And uh, no auto settings on. And then we'll click Merge. And so this way we should uh, be able to do a contrast and compare. Now, of course, Lightroom's put all its crappy background adjustments on this, so we need to process version swap that. And uh, there we go. Now, fundamentally, it needs lightening up a little bit uh, due to the process version swap being applied uh, because that means all the process version swap is doing is actually putting this little subtle S-shaped uh, or inverted S-shaped tone curve on the uh, shot. And so I'm going to come back to basic and I'm just going to warm them up a little bit. Okay. And uh, it should be something like. But if we now select both of these images, whoops a daisy, uh, try that again, Andy. Um, we'll select both of these images and then we'll come over into the library module. And will it X, Y? And you watch these will be the wrong way around. So this is the dark table shot. And this is the variation uh, from Lightroom, which is a 32-bit floating point DNG. But it has an absolutely zero advantage over this 32-bit floating point image over in um, Lightroom uh, because... The only advantage, really, would be um, to a DNG would be the ability to change the demosaicing algorithm because this is a proper DNG. But of course, Lightroom doesn't give you the ability to change the demosaicing algorithm. So fundamentally, um, you're no better off with this image than you are with that image once you're in Lightroom with an HDR type image which is already assembled so uh, there you go now with the um, Adobe DNG image you can see oh, up at 400 percent 
you can see, I don't think video compression is going to allow you to see this but there are one or two odd colors in there and there are the beginnings of a pre-sharpening halo along this edge you can really see it there um, there's some edge artifacting and a more pronounced pre-sharpening halo here We've got a little bit of the sharpening halo going on there, but that's because I suspect there's some Lightroom uh, sharpening applied to the image in the background, which I've just forgotten to take off. Uh, so we'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Um, but you can see there's just m less noise being generated. Uh, look how clean this fog bank is here, and look how noisy it is there. And to me, the image is just more tractable because if, if you look at this, you see how bright we are here in the sky. This is flatter and more, we've got more data to work with up here than we have in the Adobe version. It, the data is just distributed differently. And to be quite honest with you, if I come back to uh, a single image view, I did say you've got that little um, uh, XMP file called Treat Cliff Punchy. And if you go and apply that, this will give you an idea of the sort of thing you can do with that HDR TIFF, which has actually come out of Darktable. All right. And if I try applying the same sort or processing and um, this just goes to emphasize the excessive amount of contrast which is within the uh, underlying dng photo merge dng or hdr dng um, the lightroom's created so you've just got more contrast to get under control and more saturation to get under control whereas with the TIFF or 32-bit floating point TIFF that you get out of that dark table the image is flatter to start off with and flat is good because as long as it's flat it allows you to do various localized adjustments either here in Lightroom or over in Photoshop or even if you are a, a, a non-Adobe person if you were using GIMP you'd be able to do localized adjustments in there to make this image look even better and um, why well, it says profile missing there I've no idea but um, you, you just ignore it it, it is just a vastly superior image have we got uh, sharpening on? Yes, we've got default. Well, it's not quite default uh, sharpening on there. And uh, if we go in and have a look at one of these high contrast edges, you can see it's much cleaner and uh, far less sharpening uh, halos. And, of course, the sharpening halos are totally, totally brought about by Lightroom sharpening. We could actually take this image unsharpened over into Photoshop and sharpen it without any halos at all. Uh, whereas no matter what we do to uh, this DNG created by Lightroom itself, even if we take all the sharpening off and if we come into it at, um, where's a good place to start to see it might be on the very very tops you can just see between the orange of the sky and the darker tones of the hillside you can just see this pale band about three or four pixels wide which is this blooming pre-sharpening halo which is brought about solely by Lightroom's demosaicing algorithm and of course you don't get any of that uh, with dark table so uh, there you go guys and girls I hope you sort of enjoyed that and found it got a bit of use out of it I mean it doesn't look too bad just remember how good it can look inside of um, Lightroom as a 32-bit float 
uh, brought, brought in from Dark Table. I mean, we could process this in a and other way. Told you that missing profile would disappear, didn't I? We could just go and put some more contrast in the image. Okie dokie. Um, we could bump up the shadows a little bit. We could bump up the clarity a little bit and start to lift out this foreground. And everything's more subtle and more evenly spread and sort of more controllable because we're not battling light rooms in our background contrast. And I am so impressed with this HDR merging over in uh, dark table and then bringing it back into uh, an adobe product i'm so impressed with it it's unreal and um, you know we could go and put a graduated filter on there select the sky and we could intersect that by holding down the alt key intersect with a graduated filter linear gradient and we can just sort of bring that down there like that and um, I can just go and drop the exposure in the sky a little bit. Uh, maybe increase the saturation in the sky a little bit. And uh, that'll do for that. And then, so we'll click close on there. And then I can come into the HSL panel. And I could go to the luminance for, or, or the saturation, I'm sorry. Come on, saturation for oranges and just tweak those oranges up in the sky a little bit and a little bit with the yellows, rather like that. Uh, maybe pump up the reds a bit and if you, maybe even pump up the blues and the cyans or aquas a little bit as well. There you go. And it's a much more gentle image, um, but it's certainly full of depth and it portrays the mood and atmosphere of a pre-sunrise uh, dawn on quite a cold day uh, with a full-blown cloud inversion over the Hope Valley in the Peak District in Derbyshire. And uh, this plume of steam up here. I mean, bear in mind, this is a five-shot exposure blend. And if we go into it at um, 100%, um, you can't see any ghosting of this moving smoke or moving steam at all from the Oak Valley Cement Works, which is underneath the cloud and the hot steam coming out the kiln chimneys there where they're drying the limestone out is actually punching through the cold fog. Yeah, I mean, seriously, Dark Table impresses the bejesus out of me. It really does. But this HDR merging that you can do to create... I mean, obviously, this is for export over into an external editor, such as Lightroom, Photoshop, GIMP, whatever. Or we could actually go and process this baby and continue the processing of this inside a dark table which as i said before will be the subject of a future video but for now i'm going to say tara and wrap this up i'm going to edit this uh, a little bit later on because i've got to go out for my two mile walk now to uh, try and get myself a little bit fitter to go into iceland so, um, so please you're gonna to have to remind me sometime after i'm back on the 20th of october to actually do a full-blown hdr process video over inside of dark table so bear that in mind make a note of it everybody and um, just make sure you remind me to do it otherwise i'll just get carried away and do something completely different but for those of you who are on the uh, lightroom adobe gravy train yeah, Ooh, it's a gravy train Thor apart from the management team over at Adobe and the shareholders, I don't know. But uh, if you are an Adobe customer, um, really, you do need to download and install Darktable and take advantage of this. Um, absolutely superb and really simple and super fast. Create HDR because as far as I'm concerned, 
eat the dog's dangly bits. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. Um, whether that'll go down well with the advertisers, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys and gals, hope you got something useful out of that. Hope you found it useful and interesting. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Leave a nice comment below. Tell your friends about it. And a big shout out to the gentleman who dropped me a $9.99 uh, super thanks the other day. What was his name? Where are we? Where are we? I do need to go and find the chap's name. Um, should be on here somewhere. You can see all the junk I watch, can't you? Yeah. Um, I can't see it now. Where, where is it? I think it was on this. Uh, was it on this? Oh, shut up, you silly bitch. Um, where are we? Um, but, but, but there we are. Adventure Tent 6842. Sir, you are a gentleman and a scholar, and you have my eternal gratitude. If you want anything doing specifically, just drop me a PM or drop me an email. My email's drifting around on my YouTube channel somewhere. Uh, so, big, big thanks to uh, Adventure Tent 6842 uh, for your kind contribution. Lovely, jubbly. All right, guys and gals, um, let's get back to the uh, shot. And uh, so there we go. <laughs> I've taken too long to say to her, haven't I? So there you go. Two roo guys, stay safe, stay well, keep taking the pictures. Uh, keep your fingers crossed that I actually make it back from Iceland alive. And until the next time, two roo.